You're watching ABC 7 News at 5 on your side. A D.C. nightclub owner spends a day in jail and is now facing serious charges after he says he simply obeyed the law. Mark Barnes owns the park at 14th and in a story you'll see only on 7 tonight. Stephen Gina joins us live from outside that club with why Barnes is being charged with theft. Stephen, what's the story here? Well, Leon, right now, instead of preparing for a rush of customers, Mark Barnes is getting ready to go on trial. He says this after he confiscated an ID from a suspected underage patron. And when the rightful owner of that ID came in and said, I want it back, he said no. The park at 14th packs them in nightly. The owner, Mark Barnes, says he got cramped as well recently when he squeezed into a jail cell. How bad is that? for upholding the law, you get locked up. Surveillance video captured what went down here on August 8th. A woman is turned away because bouncers question her ID. Two days later, August 10th, you see her come back and go in with a friend. A few moments later, the friend comes out and rendezvous with a third woman. Barnes believes she handed this third woman her rightful ID so she could get in. He suspects the underage woman used it as well. The rightful owner came back at some point and I said, I don't give back IDs for people who fraudulently use them. Barnes used to own the Dream Nightclub in Northeast DC. An underage woman drank at his club back in 2002, then drove drunk and killed a U.S. Park police officer. Barnes says when his insurance shot into the hundreds of thousands of dollars, he sold Dream. He says the experience made him diligent, but now he says doing the right thing has him facing a trial for theft. They make me wrong for doing my job. Now, if she got in there and drank and did something else and hurt somebody, then I'd be doubly wrong. Barnes says when they confiscate an obvious fake ID, they shred it, destroy it. In this case, it was a Liberian driver's license and a Liberian identification card. He says that most likely he sent it to the Liberian embassy or to the U.S. passport office. Reporting live, Stephen Cheetah, ABC 7 News. Okay, Stephen, thank you.